You almost said it. You almost. I, I did almost. I almost said so. I was waiting. I was I close. Was I was this close. All right, so on a previous episode, uh, we went through and compared uh, the Miami Dolphins to Buffalo Bills, new additions, what their depth chart looks like versus Buffalo. Um, what? You <laughs> said new edition. I was thinking about a 90s R&B group. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn in love. Whoa. <laughs> what was that? I'll be here till Thursday. Try the veal. <laughs> Let's get to talking about the New York Jets, um, who Mario picked to win the AFC East this season. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so the New York Jets, um, which I know... Big overhaul for them. A lot of people in the Bills Mafia and Hashtag Nation think they're going to be a tire fire. Well aware. Yeah. Well aware. Well aware. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so, because I've said, <clears throat> "Hey, Kyle, what's up?" <laughs> I thought it was Bryce Pop. I swear <laughs> to God. I think that the New York Jets, for the statement you just said, mm-hmm. with the overhaul, are going to have enough talent to trump some of the coaching that made the deficiencies in the coaching. Uh. Yeah, I, I, mm, I can't get there. I like Mono Darnold. You know what I mean? I like him. Post Mono Darnold? Post Mono Darnold. Yeah. I like him. Um, really, I mean, when he came back, it, it, it was a different I, man, different yeah, quarterback. It, it was, it was uh, you know, his energy was contagious. My God. <laughs> He's been sitting on that joke for, for a month. Uh, <laughs> I don't, you see, I, I, cause I, I didn't initially like Darnold coming out. I wasn't a fan. No, no, but well, neither I, was, neither was I, you know, No, but it, you know, it, it, you want to get past the ghosts and the Adam Gase. I'm all right home. to say that he is better than I thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. I, I will absolutely lock in that he, Sam Darnold is much, has acclimated to the NFL much better than I thought he would. Yeah. But I, I like what the Jets have done and you know, we sat on the on the Sunday drive and we were doing the schedule prediction when I was talking about Greg Williams. I have high confidence in that lunatic. Mm-hmm. I just think he's he's a game changer in and of himself. Yeah. On some of the things that he's able to do as far as to motivate. Now you want to talk about Bounty Gate. That's different. That's different motivation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he. you don't survive this long in the league just by doing Bounty Gate one year. You know right. what I mean? I'm sure there's other ways that he motivates his players uh, and lights a fire on underneath him. However... Well, it's obvious that there's some culture that he brings that's effective and some culture that he brings that's ineffective because he's been on, like, 14 teams. Well, I mean, you know what? I don't know about the Jets as far as their infrastructure. However, if Williams is the de facto... I mean, I like Gase as an OC, not a head coach. I agree with that. Okay. If just by title he's the head coach... And Williams is the de facto because you got to that, think. That's the truth. That's what they do. That's that, that's exactly what happens. That's what Williams I'm saying, runs though. the defense. Gase runs the oh, offense. Oh no! Here's that's what I'm that. saying. If it's if you look at the Jets, their attitude is more of Williams than Gase, both Agreed. offensively and defensively. Agreed. So could it be just a smokescreen that Gase is the head coach? Actually, Williams is the head coach, and his message is resonating, and Gase is just running the offense? Because if that were the case, I'd like the Jets a lot more. I'm just telling you, if Williams is the head coach and Gase was just the OC, that's, I'd like You'd like that better. But I really think the attitude of the Jets emanates from Williams, not Gase. Mm-hmm. So by saying that, changes the paint job on the New York Jets, doesn't it? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. I my issue with the Jets is the fact that they've completely made over their wide receiver room, and it's I just don't see them being effective right away. Right, Darnold needs needed some help, and they got him help. Yeah. But it's it's like when you're really hungry, and you instead of like going to the store to buy corn, you plant, <laughs> and then you're just like chilling there, and you're staring at the ground, and you're like, do something, poking it with a stick. Come on. Rashad Perryman, who everybody's just been waiting to be good for the last five years. <laughs> Denzel Mims, who 
it admittedly could be. could be a boom or bust player. Yes. Um, they brought they brought back Jamison Crowder, who was their number one, and that that makes a lot He's of so sense. Good. Um, but outside of that, like you brought in Josh Doxson again, another player who you've been the NFL's been waiting for Josh Doxson to be good, but he was in Washington. What? Before your corn comment, I was gonna say. The way that you describe the receiving core, and I thought you were going to start with, are the guys that when your wide receiver one has a bye, you got to pick someone up off the waiver wire, <laughs> and you're like, Doxton, no, uh, parent, do I? Who are they playing? <laughs> I don't want to pick these guys up for a week. <laughs> who do I drop? My default? Oh, no. Uh, I like my backup defense more than these guys. <laughs> but you, you understand, like, it, that the Jets are riding the thing that you hate the most, and that's potential. Yeah. So yeah. Josh Dox and Prashad Perrin were looked at as to be, you know, something in this league, and they haven't manifest. Yeah. You didn't know you were going to lose Quincy and Nunwa as fast as you did. No, well, not after and that contract kn- extension. Yeah, nobody knows what's going on with him. I mean, I, truth be told, football aside, I hope the kid does the right decision for himself because one hundred percent. I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, you know, in that in that in that respect, you look at Chris Herndon. Mm-hmm. Suspended four games last year, so yep. he got off to a late start. Yep. Darnold, Mono, he got off to a late mm-hmm. start. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and all of that, you know, it messes with the continuity of the offense. Sure it does. How how simple of, or no, how fast can these guys that are coming in, because you got to think, Doxon, Perriman, and Mims are all going to be on the same page, you know, as far as this goes. So right. Mims could see himself as a starter real quick. It's not like Perriman sure and Doxon were there for a year. Right, right? yeah, absolutely. I think that's kind of the plan here, right? You want to play Mims enough to get his feet wet, but I don't think you're you're hoping and praying that he's no. starting for you week no. one through five. But Bell know? does open a lot of open up a lot of things. For sure them. does, and don't forget that they also added two other running backs in Frank Gore and and Kenneth Dixon. Dixon's sneaky. Dixon's a sneaky pick, right? Yep. Because he was with Baltimore, got suspended. Tore his ACL. Like, it's been a bad run for him. Yes. Super talented Well, not really though. a run. Well, yeah, ACL. yeah t- technically speaking, it's been, a, <laughs> it's been a tough hobble. Tough limp. <laughs> Jesus. There's talent there. Yes. But the, it's it's a, so much unproven talent. It's like, this. these are guys that you sign when you're really close against the cap, when yep. you are you need to put a team together that can kind of sort of win, you know, but maybe it's not going to. It, it, you're still testing the waters on these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't understand why you're doing that with Darnold entering year three. Like this is this is Darnold still affordable? Like well, you have money, you should have money to spend yeah. here, and you're and you're just pissing away this opportunity. How many guys want to come to New York though? Like, I don't believe that they really have a ton of faith in Sam Darnold when they draft Mackay Beckton to be the <laughs> tackle. Like. <laughs> you draft Mackay Beckton to be the left tackle, you're like, well, maybe this quarterback thing isn't so important. I like Beckton. I, Becton's fun, but he is not good. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. If you're studying the Jets. Yeah. What, was Doxon, Perriman, and Mims brought in to open up the running game? Or did you pick up those three guys thinking that Bell garners enough attention that those guys will get one-on-one looks? This is lightning in a bottle. Is that what it, okay. That's is All just right. lightning in the bottle to me. I don't know about you, but that's the way I feel about it. I think both of them open the up some, because you got burners. You got guys yeah. on the outside that you have to devote attention to. So your most impactful player on the offense, which is Le'Veon Bell, you can get him the ball. Right. Well, I mean, Doxon's a burner. Uh, Mims is a exactly. burner. Yeah. That's, that's... Um, I, Perryman, I wouldn't classify as a burner anymore. But oh, okay. Um, he still he can still move the chains. Yeah, but if you but... go into a four wide set, you got Perryman. Yeah. Doxon, Mims. And Crowder, Crowder, and you got Bell in the backfield. That's right. that's a lot of toys for Darnold. Sure, sure, but it, unfortunately, potential toys. Perryman perennially hurt. Dotson perennially hurt. Mims, we just don't. I mean, we just no, don't no, know. Yeah. No, we just don't know no. about him. talent. Yes, right, but, right. Uh, offensive line rough. Beckton, uh, Beckton, Alex Lewis, Connor McGovern, Brian Winters, and. Chuma Idoga. Didn't they pick up a guy from Carolina? I have no idea. Van Rotten? Uh, no. Not according to our lads. He's not on their depth chart. Oh, yeah, there he is. Van Rotten. Sorry. Excuse me. I right tackle.
They were, they did what the Bills did last year. They got a bunch of different parts and decided to throw them together that's and it. draft a guy. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, that's it. Is they're throwing stuff at the wall. Uh, they also picked up George Fant, who uh, was in Seattle, Ooh. but Fant was sort of like that seven. It was like a sixth offensive lineman. He's Naseki. Yeah, right. They, they used him all over the place. Exactly. They used him in the backfield. They used him in. All, <laughs> they used him in all sorts of different yeah. in all sorts of different looks. Great athlete, but again, is he a three down, four down offensive lineman? I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, no, I mean, I think, I think that's somebody you get because he gives you the. He can play if 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 Becton's not ready. Well, fans not gonna fans gonna be all right. I know. I know there was different infrastructure, but if you look at you know you got to keep up with your your own division. We always talk about this. Sure. Okay. So the year that the Buffalo Bills draft Tre'Davious White, the Jets draft Jamal Adams. Yep. The next year, they draft Darnold. We draft Allen. Mm-hmm. The, fo- a, the Trey's draft was a great draft. Yeah, the there next, were a lot of really good players. The next draft. year, it was Quinn and Williams, and then Ed Oliver. Yep. So the Bills and the Jets have been on this similar path. You're right. Oh, so then a yeah. year later, the, the the Jets overhaul of their line is very similar to the Buffalo Bills going into 2019 overhaul. Right. And they were even going for the same center in Mitch Morris. Well, and so it truth be told, the Jets did the Jets did what the Bills used to do, and they've been doing it for a long time, and they finally finally got away from it, where they kept trying to. S- slide in a new coach into the same roster, right? Yes. And it was always, hey, we've got a pretty decent roster. Come be our head coach. And it, it, it was like roster, then coach. And they kept cycling through head coaches and just never seemed to really get it. Mm-hmm. And when the Bills brought in McDermott, McDermott just washed the whole roster, totally started fresh. And that's really where Miami is, right? They, yeah. they've, they've done something similar. And they're doing the same thing with the Jets. They're, they're just they're trying to wash out the roster and just and and try and get to the right spot but offensively I don't think they're anywhere close defensively different story but you put CJ Mosley and Greg Williams together and that's a dangerous combination <laughs> like that Jets game I'm not convinced the Bills win that game early in the season if Mosley stays healthy the whole game because no, Mosley was probably destroying don't. He the was. Bills he they was didn't score any points no. against what Mosley on the field. No, and as soon as he went off the field, that's when the Bills got in the game. Yep. So Mosley, as old as he is, with Greg Williams, is dangerous. Yeah, is he old though? I think he's pretty old. I think in his sixth year. Mosley? Nah. He that's had a five-year long. deal with with um, that's long. Baltimore, and then he went over right to the Jets when his. Year- Damn, he's only twenty-seven. <laughs> Damn. Got him. Because I always talk about this, as far as the defensive side goes, of the New York Jets. I always look down the middle of the field. Yep. You have Quinn and Williams. Mm-hmm. You have C.J. Mosley. Yep. You have Jamal Adams. Yep. Quarterbacking the middle of that field. I just I just had, I, I have a very, very serious conversation to have with you about, because we, we've already talked about Miami. What kind of defense do they run? Base 3-4. Right? They're running a base 3 4 Miami? In Miami. Yeah, Miami's running well, a base 3 Because that's Belichick. Right. Yeah. Okay. The Jets. 4 3. Greg Wright. No. He's running a, run a 3 4. He's running a 3 4. You know what, though? I know we can go through the 3 4 and the 4 3 all day I'm long. I'm just saying that if but you look it, at the people AFC blend East. It all the time. Yeah, but if you look at the AFC East, every team but Buffalo is 3 4. Okay. The Bills have run three man fronts before that. Sure. Right. Everyone has that little bit. It's like, it's like a team it's, that runs a Wildcat almost. Yeah. To a lesser degree. Okay. All yeah. right. So you think this is a non-point? I, I, you you have four guys point. with your hand in the dirt. Now, whether or not you call that guy an outside linebacker or an edge rusher, is the di- you know, what's the difference? Right. You know I mean? Okay. I understand right. that, but I think now, because of how offenses are, how they have to adjust, what defenses have to do, you could say that you're a base 3-4, but you don't really play a 3-4 most of the time. It's not like back in the okay. 80s it, and 90s. Five years ago, this is probably more of a conversation. Actually, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I understand. All right. And that's good. I mean, but it's good to have that basis to say, okay, do I want a guy who's zero technique in the middle of this defense, or do I right. want two, three techniques? Right. Um, or okay. one eye or something like that. So it's, it's interesting to talk about, but you're right. Fundamentally speaking, at the core of the defensive guys with Williams – Flores and Belichick, they're all three, four guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the DC is down in uh, Miami. That's why I'm forgetting his name. So. Uh, I can look it up real fast. That's fine. You don't have to. <laughs> Not important. Doesn't matter. We're on the we're on the Jets. With the Jets, I don't think they have the offense to beat Buffalo against their mm-hmm. defense, right? Mm-hmm. But I definitely think the defense is strong enough to keep Buffalo off the scoreboard. Sounds for a familiar, while. doesn't it? 
I know. Sounds like I, a Bills, you know what I mean? Oh, well, our offense is going to struggle, but let's see if our defense can keep us in it. And yeah. therefore, you get those 13-10 games that you should win. Right. Yeah, it's, every game's close, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Every game's a winnable game. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, I, I'm kind of there with Miami um, and kind of there. Well, I guess I'm more there with the Jets yeah. than I am with Miami. Yeah. So, you think Miami's offense is stronger than the Jets' offense? Yeah. Yeah, really? I do. Really? Yeah, I do. I just give so much props to Le'Veon Bell. That's that's that guy's an animal. Uh yes, but a lot there's Le'Veon Bell was ridden pretty hard in Pittsburgh. Oh, God, really? Never mind. <laughs> I'm just saying that 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 Le'Veon Bell got a lot of usage in Pittsburgh, and now you're pairing him with Frank Gore. Like I don't think Gore makes you that I don't, versatile. I don't. I, I don't think Gore makes the team. One. You know, like, I have zero experience with Frank. I don't even know how how he he works with a, a back that's younger than him and everything. It's so foreign to me. I don't really know how is he going to work with a young back like Bell. What can Frank Gore teach Le'Veon Bell? He's a coach that puts on pads at this point. Um, what can he teach him? Yeah. What, he's going to be in the room with Greg Williams talking about the Bills' offense the whole day. <laughs> what do you think he's going to do? Hey, you got to win those two division games. Yeah, you got to. Uh, what can he say? Uh, maybe because of the mileage that has gone on to Bell, maybe they feel he's going to be Bell's personal strength and conditioning coach. Bell was, I don't pre- know. Bell was pretty beat at the end of last season. He was. He was beat he was. at the end of last season. Um, but it's, when Darnold went down, they had nothing else. No. No, oh, my God, nothing. brutal. I mean, We've you cut Frank percent. Gore. Who's going to sign him? At this point, right? You cut Frank Gore. Who's going to sign him? Patriots. No, <laughs> no. He's played for every other AFC team. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. So, what's your take on the Jets? Can they split with Buffalo? Can they beat Buffalo 2-0? What Did you? I have them splitting? I think I had them splitting. Yeah, I had them splitting. But I, you know. That's the thing. I don't think they're going to be such a tire fire that everyone thinks. I think that they have so much talent on that team that could usurp the... Why do you like using that word? I don't know. It's like <laughs> it's like you're peculiar. You love yeah, using peculiar. I do say peculiar often. You do say peculiar. I'm like, what does that mean? Interesting. Okay, I'll just say interesting. <laughs> um, I think that the talent that the Jets possess will override the coaching scheme and everything else. And like I said before... If Greg Williams is the de facto guy in the room that they're listening to and not Gase, but then they start winning, it's not going to be a problem. If they start losing stretches of games without injury, you're going to see that team blow up and explode. So do you think we're higher on the Jets than everyone uh, uh, than our buddy uh, at, over at 24-7? No. Jets talk 24-7? No, I think he's always high on the Jets. Yeah? I think he is. I think Ryan? Yeah, Ryan, Ryan's go a good dude. Great dude. Yeah, I um, like Ryan a lot. We've developed these these friendships with uh, YouTubers of other teams. Yeah, like, and they're good dudes. They're great dudes. Yeah, I like. I Ryan love collabing a lot. with them. Yeah, Ryan. Um, I like Ryan a lot. I love how objective they are about their own team, but I yeah. think he's still pretty high on his team. I really think he is. He had positive things to say about Flacco. Well, I mean, if if you want Le'Veon Bell to be the center of your offense, then Joe Flacco's the perfect quarterback to have. That's how you won a Super Bowl. Just. Oh, hey. He was like he was like Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go.